everybody it's ellen lewis from crazy for you thanks so much for coming tonight and for watching me i'm excited to share with you tonight one of noro's new yarns okunashima we've talked about okunashima just a little bit in the um the live that i did a few weeks ago when i introduced all three of noro's brand new yarns but i know i shouldn't have a favorite I know it's not fair, I know it's not right. As a mom, you can't have a favorite kid, but this is my favorite of the three new yarns from Nora this year. Um, I guess I love it because I'm such a, an Angora addict, but we'll get into that. So um, anyway, I'm excited that you're here and I'm excited to talk about this new yarn. So let's get started. Okay, so Okunashima, um, it's a beautiful blend of silk and wool and angora and mohair. So um, it's put up, let me show you one of them. I have to pick this one, it's my favorite. I brought a couple of them home because I wanna make a sweater out of it. And I was asking my husband whether I should do this one or this one. And he said, come on, Ellen, you have to do the pink one, <laughs> which of course is true. Hi, B. Nice to see you. So, Okunashima is put up in these beautiful little uh, barrel skeins, they're called. I like this shape. It's kind of interesting and different. Um, I like it when Noro is put up kind of already wound. Not because I don't like to wind the yarn. I don't mind winding the yarn, and it generally sits better on the shelf in a hank. But with Noro, it's so hard to see the colors. It's so hard to imagine how the striping is going to go when they're not, when they're all in a twisted hank. Do you know what I mean? Even like the Miyabi, which is another new yarn, it's put up in a twisted hank. I had to wind one of every skein just to see what it looks like. So, hi Gwen, hi Terry. So anyway, um, it's put up in a, in a barrel hank or a, a barrel skein and it's a hundred grams and it is 240 yards. And that's a pretty high yardage for this weight of yarn. And this is a, a solid worsted, heavy worsted weight yarn, which means that it's gonna be happiest between 16 and 18 stitches over four inches. It's hot. <laughs> so I wanted to wear this sweater tonight to show you because this is a yarn that Noro did a long time ago um, called Transitions. And as the colors change, the fibers also change. But I wanted to wear it because I wanted to show you that this little section here is an Angora blend. And I made this a million years ago and it really does kind of hold up. So anyway, I like to see if I can't wear something that has to do with the yarn that I'm reviewing. But under these lights, it's just really hot. <laughs> Hi, Jal. Nice to see you. Um, so what do I want to say? All right, it's worsted weight yarn, um, happiest between um, 18 and 15, 16 stitches over four inches, which for me means it's best on a size uh, seven, eight, nine needle. You could knit it a little tighter, but we'll get into why you might not want to do that in a little bit. So it has, as I said, some of Noro's yarns, um, don't stripe, most of them do. Most of what we think about when we think about Noro is we think about the beautiful colors and the beautiful striping. So um, Okunashima is absolutely on board, has the beautiful striping and the beautiful colors. So let me show you those beautiful colors. So there are eight colors in the palette and they are, they are all really, really pretty. This is color one, it's called Kasai, and you can see that this is a neutrally kind of colorway. I'm gonna go ahead and take, I love these little sort of ribbony things that they have started putting in. I think they're so pretty. So um, this is color one. And I, I love this color. This is just beautiful. It's got this warm, creamy color, um, which is, is very flattering. I love this. 
um, and it goes into these kind of taupes. So you've got a little bit of warm with the cream, but you also have this beautiful brown that goes into gray, which means that if you were to make something with this, you could wear it with both warm and cool tones, which I am always thinking about, you know, how could you wear this? So if you made a sweater out of this, it would go with black pants or with, with like brown or um, tan pants if you want. Um, so anyway, this is a beautiful, elegant colorway. Jal says it's chilly in her house. We should come over here, sweetie. It's not chilly here. I'm usually freezing. I'm I'm just that girl. I'm I'm that one. You know, I'm always the. Could you turn up the heat or whatever? But um, I don't know. For some reason, maybe I'm just having a my personal summer. So this is color two. This is Shibuya, and this is kind of a very lavendery kind of gray. So the gray, I'm wearing a gray. It's a very kind of cool gray. And if you put it next to it, you can see that this is a little bit of a warm gray and it's a little more purple. Let me show you. I think this is really pretty. This is probably the most subtly shaded of all of them. But if you look in it, you can see that it does have a bit of this kind of dark that really does sort of pop out um, against that, that kind of uh, purpley gray background. So and that's a really pretty color. Honestly, there is not a bad color in the bunch, which is so nice. You know, eight colors and they're all fabulous. All right, everybody loves blue. So this is color three. This is Masudo. So this is blue to kind of purple to kind of aqua. Let me show you on this side how you get this little bit of aqua. Isn't that pretty? Blue, purple, aqua, very kind of um, ocean colors. Aren't they pretty? Hi, Evelyn. Hi, Ida. Hi, Carrie. Carrie's in Toronto. Is it cold up there? <laughs> I bet it is. All right. And color four, Odawara. I think this is a really pretty color. This is definitely green and pink. If Lily Pulitzer made a Noro yarn, this would be it. So there's a lot of greens. So you've got kind of your, your classic green green. You've got some, some very soft spring green in here. Can you see that? Spring green. And then this kind of brownish bit. And then this lovely pop of pink. To me, that looks so very springtimey. Yeah, I love that. We had a, um, a striped sweater at the trunk show knit in that colorway, and it was just beautiful. All right, and this is color five, Nagato. This is a fun one. So this is basically kind of a brown and taupe with these pops of green and orange and blue, aqua blue. So I think, I think that's a really pretty color too. I have this knit up in a swatch that I'm gonna show you later on so you can see how pretty it is. When this yarn first was introduced, I mean, not introduced on the market, but when um, when I first saw it, it was in just kind of a a very loose hank, and I just thought, "Huh, I'm not sure about this one." And I'm, I'm, I love the put up. I, like I said, I love the way they put it up. One, two, three, four, five. So this is color six. Shiru, shiru, shiru. And this is. Kind of, I call this pink with a pink and purple with a high, highlighter green.
I have this knit up in one of the projects that I'll show you later on too, so you can see how nice it looks. I love this, this purple in here. I think that's pretty. Very fun. And it has, as Noro often does, um, and I think this is really important, it has this little bit of kind of a brownish in there, which is nice when you've got all of these sort of sweet colors, like all of this pink and purple. That little bit of brown in there gives your eye a break, gives, you, gives your eye a place to sort of rest. And I think that's important. And it's why Noro is so good at what we do. Um, and that's color six, seven. And this is color seven. So this is the color that I'm going to be using that I swatched up for you guys to see. And this is the color I'm going to be making my sweater in. Again, it's, it's very pink and very purple, but this little bit of earth in here definitely gives you, um, a break, you know, it keeps it from being cloying. So I think that's a beautiful color. Also, and again, from a from a fashion standpoint, this is going to give you an option of wearing with camel or khaki or or gray or black. Think about these things because I'm a sweater knitter. All right, and then the last color is. This is beautiful. If you're a, a winter, this is a wonderful, wonderful color for you. So I call this black with brights. It's, it's actually called Hiyoki. And I love that they have these great Japanese names. Um, so this has a lot of purple and charcoal. So it reads dark, you know, but I think that pink really pops in there and the green you see that green? Popping. So this is pretty. Gel, I think this is the color that you have. Okie doke. So those are the colors. Let me see, I wanted to tell you. Um, so again, the fiber content is um, silk. It is 35% silk, 28% wool, 20% angora, and 17% mohair. And I'll just tell you that when Noro does a fiber blend, they don't do it by accident. You know, everything that they put into a yarn is there for a reason. Each different fiber has a role to play. I mean, it's a very conscious decision. It's not like, <laughs> it's not like when I'm cooking with leftovers, you know, <laughs> oh, we have some of this, let's throw that in. No, it's, it's a very conscious decision on their part, what to put in and why. So let's talk about what the different fibers are and why they're in there. So um, it doesn't sound like a huge amount of Angora when you say 20%. But you have to remember that Angora is very, very light. So 20% by weight constitutes quite a bit of the yarn itself. So um, I'll start with, with Angora, talking about the Angora. Even though it is not the primary yarn, it's not the one that has the most, um, is not the highest concentration by weight, but I think it has the largest effect. And I think that was exactly the point when, um, when Nora put this yarn out. They wanted this to read Angora. And I'll tell you a little thing that I found out that I think is kind of funny. Um, the name of the yarn, as I said, is Okunashima. And Okunashima, so I, I don't know if he did this on purpose or it was just a little inside joke, but Okunashima is the name of an island off of the southwest of Japan. And Okunashima means bunny island. So apparently it's, it's an island where there are, is a huge population of feral rabbits and um, you can go there and interact with these rabbits and they're just running around like, <laughs> like rabbits do. So I think it's just funny that he would have named this yarn Rabbit Island and that it, you know, it has this whole high component of Angora, which of course is bunny fur. So 
and Gora is bunny fur. Let's see. Jal is saying yes. Yay! Okay, so Angora is bunny fur. And if you haven't ever worked with Angora or you're not sure what Angora is about, what I thought I would do is um, kind of show you what Angora looks like. So 100% Angora looks like this. So this is 100% Angora. I'm gonna see if I can get this close to sh so that the camera so 100% French Angora, and this hasn't been knit or anything. It's just sitting there in its fragile little ball. I want the camera to kind of catch it. So can you see that halo all around it? You see that? So Angora is all about softness and this incredible halo. So it, it just, it just the yarn has this, this, this beautiful kind of floof, this, this halo. Um, and when you knit it, it gets even more floofy. So here's a little uh, Angora bunny rabbit that I knit out of Angora fur <laughs> yarn. Look at his little ears. Can you see his ears? How the yarn is just, it's just so floofy. I mean, and it gets, it gets more floofy as you knit with it and then as you wash it. So as you wash that Angora, um, it, it just really blooms. It opens itself up and it blooms and then you really notice it. And the Angora through the whole fiber, so the Angora fibers are, are carded and combed all through with all the others. So you get this subtle kind of halo, not to this extent, because again, this is 100% Angora, um, but a little bit. So um, it's a huge contributor to the nature of this fabric. And I think it's, um, a little background on Angora, just in case you're interested. Um, Angora rabbits, so Angora is a place. It's a place in Turkey, it, um, it's the capital of Turkey. It used to be called Angora, now it's called Ankara. But these rabbits um, were, were raised there and they apparently in the 18th century became very popular pets of the French royalty. Um, so they took these pet, these uh, bunny rabbits from from Turkey and they had them as little pets in, in, in uh, France and I just thought that was kind of fun and so now when you think about the highest quality Angora we always think French Angora that's what that's what this is 100% French Angora so really beautiful stuff I don't sell a lot of it because it's it's um, pretty expensive but I do sell some of it for these bunny rabbits and then at Christmas time a lot of people like the white for Santa's beards on Christmas stockings so that's kind of fun um, and okay, so the largest component of fibers in Okunoshima is silk. So it's about a third silk and we all know what silk is, you know, it's the fiber that comes from the silkworm's cocoon, but it has two characteristics that really enhance Okunoshima. And one is its luster, you know, it has a beautiful luster. Everybody knows that silk dye takes the dye really strongly and is very reflective. So it gives the yarn a nice reflectivity. And I think you kind of notice that, maybe not as much as you might in other yarns because Angora is so matte. So the, the, um, the silk in there helps to kind of counteract that very, very matte look. Also, it's strong. Um, Silk is extremely strong and this is a single ply yarn, so it could be a little bit fragile if you weren't careful. So having that silk in there is really good for that. Um, and then the other third of it is wool. And of course we know that wool is the perfect fiber because it's beautiful and, and it's crimpy and it's bouncy and it's elastic and it's, it's really every other fibers best friend. It's every other fiber sort of supporting cast member. 
Um, so the, the one third wool in there gives this a really nice hand because neither the Angora nor the silk are at all bouncy. They're just not. So if you didn't have that in there, it probably wouldn't be as, um, as nice to knit as it is. And the last component is mohair. Um, and again, I think the mohair is in there because it also is very silky and it doesn't have a lot of crimp, but it is pretty strong. So you have two sort of um, fibers that are providing luster and um, strength. And then you have the, the wool that's giving you elasticity. And then the angora, those are all the staff that's letting this angora be the diva fiber in this yarn to kind of be its beautiful, floofy, halo-y stuff. So um, this is making sense. <laughs> Um, so it's a really nice combination, I think. And knitting with it. So I liked knitting with this. I will tell you that like all Noro yarns, it is not the softest yarn to knit right out of the skein. Um, none of your Noro is going to have that kind of a, a hand to it. The beauty of Okunashima really doesn't come until after it's, it's knit. Um, when you get it in that fabric and then you kind of give it a little warm bath, then you sort of see it really um, expand and that beautiful angora come through. So as I said earlier, it is a, a single ply. So that means it has a Z twist. And a Z twist means that if you look at the fibers, you can see that the twist is running from upper right to lower left. And that means that if you are a thrower, it might come undone a little bit or, or um, untwist. If you, if you are a picker, it might twist more, you know, depending on, on the way you hold your yarn. As we knit or crochet, we are adding twist to the yarn. So if you're adding twist in the direction that the yarn is, is plied, it's going to kind of kink up as you go and you're going to have to sort of let that kink out. If the way that you carry your yarn is opposite the direction of the ply, then it's going to untwist a little bit. And so you're going to have to kind of allow the, the, um, the yarn to sort of retwist itself. As a side note, that's one of the reasons that if you look at Ravelry and you'll see a yarn, half of the people will say, oh, I love this yarn. It's just so wonderful. And the other half of the people will say, oh, this yarn is so splitty. I really hate it. A lot of it really just has to do with a mismatch between the way um, one person carries the yarn and the way it's plied or twisted. So it's just good to know. So um, I knit uh, three swatches in Okunashima. And the first one I did, as I said, in color five. And this is, was knit on a size eight needle. And I have about 17 and a half stitches to four inches in this yarn. So here is that swatch that I did. You see that? If I put it on the side, you can sort of see that halo. Can you see that fine, fine fuzz that's starting to come up? And the more you wash this swatch, the more of that kind of fine halo you're going to draw out of the yarn. Here's the next swatch that I did and I knit this on a US 9 and I have 16 stitches to 4 inches. Let me put this right side up for you. And you really don't see the halo quite so much yet. You see it a little more than you do in the yarn. So you really don't see much of that halo in the yarn. But just in the working of it, you begin to get those fibers a chance to start to relax and let that, um, that angora begin to bloom a little bit. I was concerned because, because it is 
a, um, a single ply. Sometimes single plies will have a tendency to bias because there's all this energy in the twist and there's no ply, there's no other plies for them to balance against. So sometimes if the, if the spin is not quite right, you'll, get a, you'll notice a biasing in your fabric, but um, this hasn't been blocked and there was no biasing at all. So I was really pleased by that because that can be a problem. It's not a huge problem, it, it blocks right out usually when you give, again, give a little bath. Um, but yeah, it's just something to be aware of with a single ply. But you don't have to worry about it with Okunashima. So I was really happy about that. And I will tell you the difference in texture between the swatch that's been washed and the swatch that hasn't been washed. This is really, really soft. This is so nice and soft. I would, I would definitely wear this right against my skin. You would want to, um, so for this, I would um, probably just steam block it, but then after you've put it together, give it a bath, all right? So you can, you can wash your little swatch, but I'm not, a, um, I'm not a fan of doing a real hard wet block on sweater pieces. So, like I said, this is a, at about almost 18 stitches to four inches, and this is 16 stitches to four inches. So you can see it doesn't have quite as much body, but I think it's still a very wearable fabric. You know, you can't see through it. Um, you wouldn't get arrested if you wore this as a sweater. Um, the next, hang on a minute. What color is that swatch? Okay, so this swatch is color five. And this swatch is color seven. So if any of you saw the newsletter this morning or I posted it on Instagram and Facebook, the lace cowl, that is color seven. Yeah, this is a really pretty color. This is, that's this one. Sort of interesting how the yarn looks so different in, in the skein and then in the swatch, isn't it? Yeah. So um, the last swatch that I did, so I usually do, I start on like the smallest needle that I would consider to um, making a garment um, and then I go up. So you could definitely knit this yarn tighter than 18 stitches to four inches, but I'm not sure why you would, you know, because the tighter you knit something, the more in control the fibers are, the less likely they are to kind of bloom and expand. You're definitely kind of keeping it under wraps when it's nice and tight, which is often a good thing to do with a single ply, but I think it would be counterproductive with Okunashima to knit it on too small a needle because you really want to give it that room to expand and bloom and, um, you know, develop that beautiful texture that that's what you're buying. You know, when you buy Okunashima, you're looking for the Angora. So why would you knit it so tightly that you're preventing it from doing what it likes to do? So the last one that I did, I did on um, a size 10 needle. And this one came out to be about 14 stitches to four inches. You see that? I didn't, I didn't love this at this gauge. Um, to me, it's, it's something that you could do a scarf in. And I think as you wash it and as it relaxes, it would bloom into itself, but it doesn't have the structural integrity that you would need maybe for a sweater. And, you know, there's a, there's a balance between knitting something at a, you know, comfortable gauge and something that's really just too loose. Um, it's not, it wouldn't hold up as well in a sweater. You know, it would probably be fine for a scarf or a cowl or something, but um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it at this gauge, at this loose gauge for a sweater. But, um, you know, it's your knitting. You get to do whatever you like. I'm just saying what I would do. And everybody gets to, um, everybody gets to choose. And that's kind of the beauty of knitting your own stuff, right? You get to choose what you want to do. So if you hold this up, you can sort of see that, you know, it's, it's not really see-through, but you can see the light through it. You wouldn't get arrested if you wore a sweater at knit at this gauge. But um, yeah, 
I would probably use this gauge more for accessories. And again, I would wash it. And, and you know, I'm going to do that after this. I'm going to go and I'm going to wash this and I'm going to dry it and I'm going to wash it again. And I may come back and I may say, hey, you know what? I washed that swatch that I did at the looser gauge and here it is. So, you know, we'll have to see, you know, that's why we knit the swatch. Anyway, so I love this yarn. As you can tell, I'm, I'm all in and I'm ready to make a sweater out of it. Um, Angora is really, really warm. It's right up there with alpaca in terms of its warmth because it has those loose, those fibers, that, that underbelly um, fluff from the Angora rabbit. So it is really warm and I don't tend to run hot. It's just tonight I do, I guess. But if you tend to run hot, you would be much better making this in a cardigan. So something you could easily slip on and slip off. I have not made a cardigan in this, but I have made a cardigan in Noro's other yarn that was um, a similar fiber blend. It was, it's called Kosheron, and that was a blend of um, wool and I think it had 30% Angora in it. And I'll show you that. So I've had that for a long time. Let me say real quick, let me see what's going on. Hey, Kaidi. Oh, thanks, B. So um, this is a sweater that I knit a long, 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 long time ago in the Kosheron. And I think you can see kind of the, the softness sort of from, from here, you know, um, and it, it really has held up, you know, I have some, some fuzz, I have some halos, but it really doesn't, you know, doesn't pill or anything. So this is an, a very nice um, example of what Angora does, you know, over the, over the years as you wear it and as you wash it and as you enjoy it. Um, so obviously I'm a little bit addicted. And this is the sample of the Okunashima. And this is in color one, two, three, four, five, color six. This is the one that's pink with what I call the sort of highlighter color. I'm going to show this close up. So I think this is really pretty. And I keep saying this one needs, it needs a little bath. So I'm going to have to take this and give it a little bath so that the beauty of that Angora can kind of come out and see. Um, so to wrap it up, it is a hundred gram skein, 240 yards, and you get that amount of yardage because the Angora is so very light. When you have a really light fiber in the mix, your, um, your yardage goes way up, which is nice. And it's also very, very light to, to wear. I didn't say it was cool to wear. <laughs> it's still warm to wear, but it doesn't feel heavy. You know, it feels really light and pretty. Um, it is worsted, heavy worsted to worsted. So somewhere in the, for a sweater in the 16 to 18 maybe 19 stitches over four inches range. Um, for an accessory, you could go, like I said, down to 14. Um, I think it looks beautiful in stockinette, but as you can see, it also, it has a pretty decent stitch definition, given that it's so, so fuzzy, you know? Um, so I like that. And the sweater that I did a long time ago, you saw had a cable in it too. And the, um, the little cowl that was on the newsletter this morning is a lace pattern. So it really does also show the lace. There's not so much in it that you're not going to see the lace. With 100% um, with Angora, it's not going to have any stitch definition at all. So it's just going to really, really bloom. And eventually over time, it will completely obscure you, any lace work that you might do. But this is a nice middle of the road. You get enough Angora to have a really nice halo, but not so much Angora that it obscures your stitches. So I think it's a beautiful yarn. Um, one of the things that you might want to do if you want to just try the yarn 
is I have these cute little pom-poms. And I brought some of these to show you because one skein makes the cutest little hat and you can put an adorable little pom-pom on top. So I have these on the website and they are the um, Okunashima hat kit and the pattern is free and I just love how the colors really go so nicely with it. So that's a fun way to try out the yarn. It's just one skein and you know so you haven't really um, you haven't sprung for a sweater's worth of yarn if you're not sure. Another way that if you're interested, you could try it out is Okunashima is one of the yarns that's in our issue 17 tasting pack. So if you are interested in trying all of the new yarns and all of the other yarns, um, including Subami, which was new last season, that are featured in the Noro issue 17, you can order a, a Noro tasting kit and we'll send that right out to you. And that has samples of, I think it's like nine different yarns and that's a really fun thing to do so anyway thank you so much for joining me i really do appreciate it when you spend your wednesday nights with me and if you're watching this um later on that would be great too so um before i sign off are there any questions or comments anything let's see all right how many skeins for the cowl okay i did this the cowl is two skeins and um it's shown in color seven, but obviously it would be beautiful in any of the any of the colors. Um, and it's um, a very pretty large um, cowl, so it's about this deep, and it's large enough for you to wrap twice around your neck without, you know, being <laughs> dying. So that would be a nice another nice way to just sort of get a little angora in your life. So super fun. Um, and I am so happy to have you here and I can't wait to see you next time. So until then, keep knitting and create something beautiful. Good night, everybody.